Hi, my name is David. I am an undergraduate studying material science and engineering at UC Berkeley. My project this summer was to analyze the stress strain distribution in cladding tube welds. I'd like to start off my presentation by thanking the online REU program at Texas A&M and my mentors from Los Alamos National Labs, Calvin Lear and Stuart Malloy. The next generation of nuclear reactors require materials with improved radiation tolerance and improved high temperature strength. Oxide dispersion strengthened, abbreviated to ODS steels, are one class of material that may be able to meet these stringent requirements. Having shown resistance to damage from radiation, corrosion from coolants, mechanical stress, and creep accelerated by high temperature conditions. To ensure that these fuel pins can withstand the conditions of a nuclear reactor, the fuel cladding has to undergo a very specific manufacturing process in order to ensure that the part has the correct strength and ductility in both the base material and joints. One issue that arises in constructing the nuclear pin is that the cladding must be welded to an upper end plug that seals off the fuel. If the ODS materials melt during the weld process, microstructural change in this joint can result in worse mechanical properties than the material used in the rest of the pin. To fix this problem, a new type of welding technique, pressure resistance welding, abbreviated to PRW, is being used to join the end plugs to the cladding. Although mechanical testing shows that these welds are as strong as the cladding itself, whether stress is evenly distributed through the welding point and surrounding material remains unanswered. The question I tackled in my research is concerned with this problem. My project aimed to understand how residual stresses around the weld line affect the results of stress strain tests and where the sample will fail under certain applied loads. These results that I have gathered and will soon present on will be compared with laboratory experiments. Here is a schematic of my project layout. I used ANSYS to conduct multiple types of stress tests on the weld. As I learned more about the capabilities of this finite element analysis program, I increased the complexity of the model by simulating geometric imperfections and plasticity. The first thing I did was design the end plugs and cladding in a CAD program, which I've shown on this slide. To prepare the model for testing in ANSYS, I cut the tube radially into 12 separate pieces that form structures called petals, shown in the picture to the right. I will now present on the different types of tests I completed at ANSYS on this model and what I have learned from them. The first test I completed is an outward bend test in which I bent a pedal away from the center of the tube over a rod as shown in this animation. You can observe the increase in overall stress near the bottom of the pedal as it is continuously bent. In my last video update, only the elastic portion of the deformation was shown in the animation. However, since then, I've been able to model the plastic deformation as well. There are still some limitations. ANSYS does not show the plastic deformation past, past 8 millimeters, but this has been enough for me to be able to predict where the pedal ends up, even though I don't see where it exactly is. The next slide shows two maps, one of the total strain on the outer surface of the pedal after it has been bent over the rod, shown on the right, and the total strain going down a vertical cross-section of the pedal, shown on the left. As can be seen, stress is concentrated at a point around one millimeter above the weld line on the outer surface. Furthermore, the stress inside the pedal decreases towards the middle, around 0.25 millimeters into the tube, showing that stress is not evenly distributed on the inside of the tube, but is concentrated on the inside and outside surfaces. The second test I conducted was the backward bend test, which I also had shown in the previous animation, but without any plastic deformation. In this test, the pedal is bent backwards into the center of the tube, but the magnitude of the force remains the same as in the pedal test. Because the weld is at a tapered edge, this affects the overall amount of deformation and the concentrations of stress in the tube. Once again, I'm showing two total strain maps. One of the outer surface of the tube and another of the vertical cross-section down the center of the pedal. An interesting thing to note is that unlike the pedal bend test, here we see that the stress is distributed more evenly through the inside of the pedal and stress isn't concentrated at the surface. Furthermore, I observed greater concentrations of stress in the notch at the weld line um, in the backwards bend test than in the normal bend test. These results are shown here where I plotted stress along the weld line on both the inside of the tube and the outside of the tube for both the normal and backward bend tests. In the backward bend test, there was on average 500 megapascals more stress than in the pedal test. 
A similarity in both scenarios is that the stress on the weld line was greater on the, was greater on the inside of the cladding tube than on the outside where the notch was located. The following plot shows a comparison of the distribution of stress along the outer edge of the tube down a vertical cross section of the pedal for the outward and backward bend test. As shown, the stress sort of plateaus for the normal bend test, but has a very defined peak in the backward bend test. The area highlighted pink is the part of the path that's in the notch of the weld line. And as can be seen, there is a small sharp increase of stress in both scenarios. Another test that I conducted was just a simple tensile test. In this scenario, the stress was pretty evenly distributed throughout the body of the pedal, but changed drastically once near the weld line. As can be seen in the plot below, the stress bottoms out to zero once it reaches the top lip of the notch, spikes to 1.5 gigapascals inside the notch, and then decreases back to zero. This concentration of stress would pose a much more serious risk of rupture than the other tests in which such acute concentrations aren't existent. A closer look inside the weld line itself shows that plotting the stress along the length of the weld line yields a concave up parabola shape where once again stress on the inside part of the weld is higher than on the outside surface. The cause of this parabolic shape is most likely due to the curvature of the pedal. The final test that I worked on, and which comprised the majority of my research in the last few weeks, was varying the arc length of the pedal. A few slides ago, I mentioned that I had subdivided the cladding tube into 12 separate pedals, and all my following tests were based off that numeric division. However, something I was wrong in assuming was whether dividing the sample into 12 pedals was a small enough subdivision of the cladding tube. My following experiment was to test how varying the arc length of the pedal for example, dividing it into 10 or 20 divisions would affect the results of the tests. In these tests, I removed the notch from the weld line to simplify and shorten the calculations. I found that increasing the subdivisions of the pedal did not actually change the stress distribution through the weld line and the pedal. However, decreasing the amount of subdivisions of the pedal did affect the stress distribution, meaning that 12 subdivisions was an okay amount. Once I divided the tube into eight pedals, such that each pedal had an arc length of 45 degrees, the peak of stress shifted 0.67 millimeters away from the weld line. And instead of the stress dropping down to zero at the weld, it stayed at around one gigapascal. The division of eight pedals is the blue line in the graph. In my last video, I spoke about using representative volume analysis to predict the properties of the metal at the weld line. To recap this method, it involves coming up with a computerized unit cell of the grains and microcompositions of the ferrite, austenite, et, etc., um, to come up with bulk properties of the material. Uh, since pressure resistance welding um, does melt the steel in a localized space, uh, this changes the properties of the metal in that location. Um, so after doing some research on the topic and trying it out, I realized that it would be very difficult to undertake this project uh, and finish it in the time allotted since the microstructure of uh, ODS steel contains uh, oxide nanoparticles um, that have very complex and difficult to model interactions with the grains of ferrite, martensite, and austenite. Um, but figuring out how to do this would be a really good place to take this research in the future. Thank you all for bearing through this presentation with me. Um, I would like to uh, thank once again, the Texas A&M uh, Online RU program and my mentors from Los Alamos National Labs, Calvin Lear and Stuart Malloy.